I would like to start this episode off with a hot take. Okay. I know when the news of the new genie first broke, everyone had their doubts and, you know, the first look wasn't too promising. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, I really enjoyed Will Smith's genie in the live action Aladdin. Honestly, me too. Obviously, you know, he's nowhere near Robin Williams' genie. I know, I know. But... Considering Robin Williams obviously was not able to reprise his role. Of course. I do think he did a very good job, all things considered. Okay. Well, that's the podcast. That was our talk on Genie. (laughs) Uh, No, just kidding. You know exactly what we're talking about today. We're talking about the brand new Genie service, Genie Plus, Lightning Lane, all that type of stuff that got announced this week. Uh, I think at at time of release, maybe two days ago. Correct? Yesterday, I think. Yesterday? Okay. But um, before we... Get into it. I will introduce ourselves. Oh, no, two days ago at time of release. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. That's Sometimes I, I forget that our the podcasts don't go out immediately after we record Correct. them. Correct. <laughs> Even though I'm the one who stays up to edit them and stuff like that. Anyway. Uh, sorry. I will introduce myself. My name is Ryan. I am a fast pass vilifier and former lamp salesman. What? I worked at Home Depot in the lighting section. I'm a lamp salesman. Okay. Okay. Uh, you are Isabel. I'm Isabel. Um, fast pass novice and genie apologist. What is what does selling lamps have to do with this? Because genie's in a lamp. Oh my god. How did you not <laughs> put that together? Oh <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to quit this podcast. No, no, you were, we're okay. <laughs> um, but one thing that can really help with this podcast, uh, so Isabel doesn't quit, is leaving a positive <laughs> review. Um, on podcast networks, specifically Apple Podcasts, I I don't guess. think you can leave a review on Spotify. So yeah, I think I, it's basically Apple Podcasts. I think you can on Stitcher too, but okay. I don't know if... I don't think, I don't we're, think we're on, on Stitcher. I don't think so, so. either. Um, that's okay. But <laughs> Apple Podcasts. Yeah. If you do, if you even watch us on YouTube, go leave a positive review or leave a review that you think we deserve. Maybe write something up or not. Just give us a star rating. Uh, it would very, if very, you write us up a review, we will read it on the podcast. Yes. I have said that before. Nobody has yet to write yeah. us up a review. So that's okay so. though. Um, and then also I will say we are talking about the new genie system. Yes. If you do have any thoughts already, if you're made aware of this, or if you're, you know, about to be, you know, educated on this yeah. system, which is what we're doing on this episode. Um, let us know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below on YouTube. And uh, that would greatly help us and like the YouTube video stuff like that too. So anyway, but, but before we get into that, we are going to preface some like, our, our basic stance on everything, because it is very kind of polarizing this whole yes. thing. Yes, yes. So it has been widely, it has not been a good response in general. Yes. And I have to say, honestly, we're not going to use it. We're, we're very, I mean, we'll use Genie for sure, but we're not going to use Genie Plus because with how often we go to the parks, that is just absolutely not sustainable. And it's not, it's not going to be, um, something that a lot of families can afford either because they're not lowering their ticket prices at all, you know? Yeah. Um, ticket prices have not changed since getting rid of fast passes or anything, and now suddenly they're springing an extra $15 per person per day on you, which, I mean, if you have a family of four or more, that's a lot of money. That's a yeah. lot of extra money. So I... I <sighs> I go back and forth on Genie Plus, but we just want to preface say we are not personally going to be using it, but we're also coming at this from the standpoint that we were optimistic that standby lines are not going to be as bad without a pass that they as bad as they were uh, standby, fast pass standby lines were if you didn't have a fast pass. Correct. And I, I will say as well, this system is built to get more money out of yeah. families. Oh, yeah. And it's built technically to benefit us. We're, we're like we're, the only kind of people who would benefit from the system. Because we don't have children. We are, yeah. we are uh, you know, going to the parks semi-often as we do. And it's something that's just like a little extra cost, whatever. But we're local and all, like, we're not paying for flights and travel yeah, and yeah. hotels and stuff. But again, like we said before, we're not going to be using this. Um, or we will use it once in a while. I, like, I don't know if we're going to be using Genie Plus when we have, because you were going to say when we have family in town. Yeah. Um, I think we would honestly more likely do lightning individual lightning lane attractions. Yeah. Because like 
but before we we're yeah, going to talk sorry, about that sorry. later because we we would have to explain the whole system which we will be explaining but before we do that um this is the only opportunity for us to talk about fast passes on the podcast really because yeah this is something that is being you know buried and going to be gone history um the fast pass system that used to exist at disney parks i i also do want to say in addition to all that stuff i also don't care about fast passes because most of my park trips have been after the park reopened. So from the pandemic, from the panda, I mean, we're still in the midst of a pandemic. I want to make that very from clear. From the pan- pandemic shutdown. From the pandemic shutdown. I wasn't sure how to word that, but that's yes. good. Um, so we took one trip where we had fast passes, and every other time we've gone to the parks, no fast passes. I've been pleased with it, but. I, oh, we did get that one pass that one time at Animal Kingdom yeah. for the safari, but that was it. Um, but honestly, like, it's been fine. So let's talk about the old fast pass system and why it was a problem. Yes. <laughs> um, if you know me, if you've seen, uh, there's a, not a popular, but it's a TikTok that got some attention on our TikTok page uh, for the love of theme parks. If you don't follow us on TikTok, go do that already. Um, but th- it was about fast passes and about how that system is, doesn't really work very well. And it was like, like a lot of people have been saying the past few days, it was a system that worked well because the system existed. Um, the reason fast passes were needed was because fast passes existed. You, you yes, fast yes, passes yes. made the lines the the wait's longer for these attractions and in order to supplement that longer wait you would get fast passes so it's yeah. it's it's a very confusing system if you do want a very detailed breakdown of the fast pass system and why in our opinions and I will tell you 99% of cast members opinions yes. why the fast pass system was not a good system. You can watch well, our video on TikTok. I will try and leave a link to that in the description of this podcast. If you do want to see that, I, I do a, a decent analogy yeah, yeah, yeah. on that. So you'll be able to kind of understand how that system works. Um, I, the one thing I don't know if you touch on in that video is that the way that the lines work for fast pass and standby is that there are two lines and then they converge at one point. Correct. Except the fast pass line cast members would have to let through significantly more fast pass people than standby people and that is what made because like there was some ratio like depending it's somewhere between like one to four and one to seven i've heard yeah. anywhere between there so for you know every person that you let through in standby you have to let through either four or five or six times as many people as fast pass so if you have a fast pass for that ride it's fine but if you don't Standby is miserable. Yeah. So. Anyway, yeah. We're, we're that that we're still talking about fast pass yeah. to get, kind of give a brief history of it. It was first introduced in late 1999 as a virtual queue, and that was kind of what it was being pitched as, which is great. Um, yeah, it's it's a better idea. Um, yeah, and then it kind of became a like an entitlement to a lot of. Um, Uh, People who would be going on these vacations and stuff, but the system allowed all guests to avoid long lines at the attractions on which the system was installed, freeing them to partake in other attractions during their wait. That's a basic pitch of what it was originally. At Walt Disney World, reservations were available um, for select attractions, character meet and greets, entertainment, and viewing areas for parades and fireworks, which they also did at Disneyland as well. I did not know that... You, there was like fast passes for like firework viewing or parade viewing. In 2019, on my one day trip to Disneyland, I had a fast pass for Fantasmic for Prime That's Viewing. Very... I have never told you about no. that on that trip, <laughs> but we did. Uh, there was like a little, like it looked like a popcorn cart, but it had fast pass kiosks in it, and they like kind of rolled it out. And we were like, oh, we could get a fast pass for this, and it won't cancel out our fast passes yeah. the rest of the time. So we just got it was like pretty much for the what nine thirty showing we would yeah. get you know primes that's we weird. would be allowed into this <laughs> roped off section. Yeah. So that's kind of what it was. Um, reservations were made up to sixty days in advance for guests who were staying on site, and thirty days in advance for those who were not. So this is one uh, part of the old fast pass system, which benefited you staying on property. Like that was a huge benefit. Because, Same with dining reservations. Yes, because with the sixty day notice, you're going to have a availability for you know every single attraction yeah. that you want to get a fast pass for at 30 days it's going to be limited limited probably cut in half especially the um the 
bigger attractions at yeah. the time, Flight yeah. of Passage and other things like that. When we were planning our trip for 2019, when the one trip you did with Fast Passes, yeah. I came over to your place at what – 5 a.m. or something so we could book them at I was six. very <laughs> confused about what was going on. I was just like, okay. We had a list of attractions we wanted to get fast passes for. And I was I was just like, no, we're going to. And I had, never, I had never been to Disney at this point. So I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and I grew up a ve- very much a like a in a trip planning family. Yeah. Um, I guess now is a good time to mention it. Um, there's a website called Touring Plans. Uh, which you were able to, it gives you forecasts for wait times yes. and what they recommend for, like you kind of f- you figure out what you want to ride and then they'll be able to put together some type of itinerary for you and say, you know, at you know, 1130 yeah. AM, Space Mountain is likely on this day, this time of year, this day of the week is going to have this long of a wait. So that'll be doable. And mm-hmm. then as soon as you're done with that, to get your best out of your day, all that type of stuff. It's a, um, it's a system that my mom used for our early trips probably between i'd say 2003 and 2008 or something and we would print out this giant itinerary this packet we would take with us one trip we all got a packet i was like geez like this is a little much oh my parents would do that on family vacations too i'm like i don't what am i to do with this yeah yeah, am i am i directing traffic i I mean i i think it was probably one where i was at least 12 but still handing a 12-year-old a packet. Oh, I mean, I was in high school when my parents were yeah. doing that, but I'm just like, I'm just here to go along with the, for, I'm just here for the ride. Um, but uh, originally, there, uh, the fast pass system, when we had this touring plans, it wasn't a reserve ahead of time system. Yeah. Um, originally, uh, um, oh, let me see where I'm at in my notes. Uh, fast pass plus, plus was a reservation system uh, and scheduling system unlike the old paper fast pass system, which was virtual queuing concept. So with the old paper fast pass system, you would, um, there'd be the fast pass kiosks. I'm sure if you've been to Disney world a a while ago or Disneyland a while ago, which they still have at Disneyland, you could walk or they did. I don't know what it's like right now. I'm kind of sad. I was kind of hoping I would be able to get the little paper fast. So you'd go up and you'd, (laughs) you'd scan your ticket or your magic band. And then they'd, you know, print out a paper fast pass, which I still have some from a recent Disneyland trip. And uh, it would give you a return time. And then until you use that fast or until that return time pops up, you can't, you can go, you can't get another fast yeah. pass. And it's a system that my family was very much like with touring plans. It was built in there because they, yeah. they would say, you know, um, if you go and get your fast pass at this time after you ride this thing for Space Mountain, you can go mm-hmm. and uh, you should, your return time should be between here and here just based off mm-hmm. of when return times move around and stuff like that. It's a very, a very scientific thing for, you know, a 12 year old to yeah. be running because I was the person in the family who would be like, okay, Ryan, grab everybody's tickets. You run over to Space Mountain <laughs> and get those because we're over in Frontierland. And like at, at the time, but it's sometime between eight and 12 years old, my mom was like, yeah, you got it. You got it. And I would, I would just go and like, it's weird, but I was so familiar with yeah. the place and it was so safe. I mean, it's maybe not the safest place. I mean, it, it is the safest place, but like. It's going to be hard to kidnap somebody in Disney World, honestly. I, I guess, but also why are you sending your eight-year-old um, to a different, whatever. It's, it is what it is. Um, but uh like we mentioned, uh, guests could make three reservations for each day. And then once those three were used, you, if you know what fast passes are, you know yeah. how this kind of works. Um, uh, then uh, the animal kingdom, once the reservation system was set up, other than the, the paper yeah, one, yeah. Um, they would have a different attractions, different tiers. So you could only make one reservation for like a top tier ride. And then the other two could be, or like two for the top tier. It's, I think it was one for top tier. And yeah, I don't remember. Um, but, uh, the guests had the option to make further reservations via in park kiosks, um, and my Disney experience after they use their three, we, I think we mentioned that yeah. too. Uh, but, uh, the fast pass system was retired, not announced that it was retired, but it was not returning once after the parks closed for mm-hmm. between March and July of 2020. Um, this is something that was obviously going to be happening when they're opening up in July. There's no use for fast passes when there's, when the parks at like 5% yeah. capacity, yeah. like it was when they reopened. So I think it was a really great thing um, for a great timing for them to retire the fast pass system. Because it, it needed work. It, yes. It was not, it, it was not as um, beneficial overall Correct. as it yeah. could have been. And I think they were seeing, 
because Disneyland had Max Pass, which is kind of. How would you explain Max Pass for those who don't know? Because I had never used Max Pass when I went on my Disneyland trips. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure. It's mainly like a like an app based Fast Pass system, and you couldn't book anything beforehand. I think. Uh, it's. From what I understand, it was very similar to what Genie Plus ended up being, except I think there might have been more rides included. Okay. I think the only difference between the main difference between Max Pass and um, Genie Plus is that with Genie Plus, there are some rides that you would need to pay extra to get Lightning Lane for. Yeah. So with Max- that, <laughs> <laughs> um, with. All of that being said, we are going into the new Genie, Genie Plus, and Lightning Lane systems, and we're going to be explaining exactly how this all yes. works. There has been many people already on my our social media asking us on both Instagram, YouTube, yeah. TikTok, TikTok Live, oh, are you making a video on this? Or And we, I do not want to make a video, a short form video on this because there is, it's very, there's, very dense. There's too much to go through. But it's yeah, and I don't want to. I don't want to miss anything. Yeah, and also everybody else is doing those videos. If you want to see a very I'm short, sure, yeah, form, I'm sure there's thousands of other videos. Correct. Everybody hopped on it as soon as it was there, and I, you know, I didn't want to be, you know, yeah, hundred and tenth in line of making that. <laughs> so I figured, you know what, we're gonna cover this on yeah. our podcast. Um, and Isabel found out everything there is to know about this. I am gonna be tagging along for this ride because I still don't understand everything that has to do with this new system. So do you wanna first introduce yeah. the Genie app itself? So they have introduced three new things. Well, four kind of. Um, excuse me. So um they have Genie, which is the base. It's complimentary. Genie you don't have to pay for. Yes. And it is going to be, it's not a new app. It is going to be in your My Disney Experience app. So uh, you don't have to download a separate app. It's going to be something that's in-app. So kind of like uh, Clippy with uh, Microsoft, yes. yeah. the little oh paper gosh, clip. It's just like Clippy. I know. Um, that, that would be a great way to explain it, I guess. <laughs> so Disney explains it. Um, says easily maps out an entire – or easily map out an entire day inspired by things you love, maximizing your park time and your fun. Itineraries update throughout the day so you can better go with the flow as the day changes. So to me, that sounds kind of like the thing your mom used, the touring except plans. a digital digital version. And if things were wait times were changing, then it'll change uh, your itinerary around. The one question I have with this is Disney is Disney going to be honest with this or are they going to use it I as a don't crowd know. control? That is what I don't understand. I am very, very curious to see if this ends up being – because if this works, if this genuinely helps, that'd be great. But I feel like it's going to end up being a, like, a, a thing where like they're going to um, push people away yeah. from certain attractions and then hope that they just don't go to that later in the day. Yeah. Um, well, because, you know, you could get push notification and be like, you know, we recommend to wait into like, you know, to not ride this right now because the wait time is really long. And it's like, you know, maybe they're just doing. Because I mean, like with Jungle Cruise, if you don't like get in that first thing in the day, the line's only going to get worse throughout the day. Yeah. You know? So I'm very, I'm very interested to see because I'm optimistic about this. I would love for this to be something that's genuinely helpful and like apparently you'll be able to um, tell it like what you're interested in. So you can tell it you're interested in like thrill rides or you're interested in um, foodie experiences and stuff like that. That's cool. So I'm interested to see how that goes. So it's, it's basically clippy. Um, It also says bringing together all new features and existing favorites in one central place, a personal tip board, forecasted wait times, mobile order, dining and experience reservations, restaurant check-in and a virtual assistant. Mm -hmm. So, so this virtual assistant, is that going to be Genie that pops up? I don't know. I'm interested. Um, I also know that Robin Williams had like some issues with, he didn't want them to be like, to use Genie to like advertise for them some things. So he might not be happy about, he might not have been happy about this if he was still alive. Yeah. But. Um, I also know that he had some issues with them using his likeness in advertisements for yes, yes. Um, Aladdin. We're quick um, side note on the Aladdin movie and the Aladdin movie franchise um, with uh, Robin Williams is taking a serious 
um, a few different serious roles in his career. Mm-hmm. He was taking that path because he wanted to be, you know, Oscar nomination, all that type of stuff. And um, originally he had mentioned it was just a verbal agreement with Disney saying, you know, yes, I want to play this genie role, but I also have, you know, goodwill hunting and other things yeah. going on right now. So I'd like to be able to just play this role and don't put my name on stuff. Just mm-hmm. like I'll be a part of it. I'll be in the credits, all that stuff. And then the first advertisement that came out for, you know, coming soon um, for Aladdin just was in studio of Robin Williams doing the voiceover for Genie. That was like Ugh. the first thing everybody saw. And he was kind of like, Ugh. and like he, I think he like didn't come back to play Genie yeah. um, for the next movie. But then the movie after that, he came back for like a VHS release because he, he wanted to reprise the role, but somebody else played him previously. Yet. Like, yeah. Uh, but uh, aside from all that, I, it'll be interesting. I know they probably won't have him featured. It's just going to be the character because it's not yeah. It's not him. It's an animated character that Disney owns. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but it'll be interesting. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe they'll get Will Smith to voice it. I, 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 <laughs> I, would, I would not like that, no. <laughs> so then the next thing is Genie Plus, which is uh, you have to pay for Genie Plus. Correct. And... Um, I don't think the price is as bad as it could be. I will say that. Comparing it to... Comparing it to other theme parks. Um, I don't think it's as bad as it could be. Yeah. So if you compare it to other theme parks like um, this summer at Universal, other people have been saying this online, Universal Expre- Express Pass yeah. had this summer between June and August cost minimum per day probably like 150 to 200 dollars per person i think they were saying it was 191 dollars. yeah so um that is and that's in addition to your ticket Correct. that is not that does not include your ticket um and you know you're gonna be paying similar not similar prices but you know similar um ratio prices to your ticket at six flags for their flash pass um at disneyland paris they did recently introduce their new you know yeah fast pass system which has um, you're paying per ride up to like eighteen dollars for Buzz Lightyear Space yeah. Ranger spin. So this it's not as bad as it could be. I will say that, but I'm interested to see if it changes things with it being so cheap. So that it's because I mean with stuff with like Universal Express Pass, like there's a clear divide, and like you have to be like fairly wealthy or staying at one of the um, resorts yeah. to be able to get the express pass. Yeah, they're, they're top tier resorts. Because that is not like a, a attainable thing for most people. That's not something where you're going to be buying your ticket at the game and be like, yeah, sure, we'll add yeah, that on. Yeah, just add that on, you know, an extra $200 per ticket. But this is like, with it being cheaper, I don't know. I'm just curious to see how that affects things. Yeah, and did, did you even sorry. list the prices yet? Sorry, I'm so sorry. It's okay. It, at Walt Disney World, it is $15 per day per guest. And yes. at Disneyland, it's twenty dollars per day per guest, which I think is a little weird. I'm gonna be honest, because there are significantly less rides at that use it at Disneyland. Um, I don't know about that. So because there are more rides at Disneyland than there are at Magic Kingdom. Um, I okay. Uh, Genie Plus includes fifteen plus attractions at Disneyland Resort and forty plus attractions at Walt Disney World. Because there's there's two parks I know. versus four. I know. But still, <laughs> still. Um, so uh, the whole thing that works is now the fast pass lane is going to be called Lightning Lane. And you choose the next available time to arrive at a variety of attractions and experiences losing, using the Lightning Lane entrance. And I really hope this is Lightning McQueen themed. If not, I'm complaining. Um, I don't know if, if they should be using lightning mcqueen in star wars land or world of avatar i feel like that is a little bit of a (laughs) okay um, maybe not (laughs) um but one big difference is you can only make one selection at a time so there's no like you you get three you use those three and then you can make one at a time it's only purely one at a time yeah so with the interesting with this new system it's going to be a um it's going to be weird because it's there's going to be a lot of people figuring out within the first week, two weeks, okay, what goes the fastest? Yes. So with, you know, the old fast pass paper ticket system, people would be aware that, okay, you know, Matterhorn at Disneyland is not going to have any fast passes available after, yeah. after what, 12, 12 noon. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and it, you know, same with space mountain or same with Indiana Jones adventure, stuff like that, that was already kind of something that they established. And then with the reservation system, people were allowed to forget about that for Disney world, at least. And then max pass, you gotta, yeah. you know, figure that out. But with it's the next available one, it's kind of going to be playing like, you know, who gets there first, who yeah. gets done well, with that, you know? Yeah. That's the other thing that's interesting. So lightning lane, select, lightning lane selections will be made on the same day of your visit. Yeah. You do not make them ahead of time, and there is no on-site advantage for resort guests for Genie Plus. There is an on-site advantage for resort guests for light for if you're buying individual Lightning Lanes purchases. Um, they can make their they can start making their purchases at 7 a.m. if you're a resort guest, but everyone else has to be in the park to make their individual Lightning Lane purchases. Okay. So I we have seen a lot of people upset about the 7 a.m. Um, having to get up at 7 for um, to make your Genie Plus uh, Lightning Lane selections. But, I mean, we're pretty early risers for the parks. The only one that – you mentioned the only one that kind of sucks is Epcot. Yeah. The, uh, it was, it was, it's funny because with – Right now, with the rise of the Resist- rise of the resistance boarding group system, um, you have to wake up at seven a.m. and yeah. to hopefully get a boarding group. And most of the time, people don't. Yeah. Um. So you're going to wake up at seven a.m. Let's say you're not going to be wanting to get into the park till ten a.m. So you wake up, you don't get it, and you're like, well, whatever, I'm going back to sleep. Yeah. With this, um, you for Remy's Ratatouille. What a, what adventure. I don't, I don't know what it's rat called. Rat ride. Victoria calls it rat, rat ride. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the new Ratatouille ride that's opening at Epcot, you do have to make that reservation at 7 a.m. Epcot doesn't open till 11. <laughs> so if you're wanting to ride that ride, you are forced to wake up at 7 a.m. to make that yeah. select that possibly join the virtual queue or pay for the virtual queue. We're going to get, we're going to get yeah. to that, but it's, it's kind of frustrating for those who, want to be able to have a relaxing vacation. I'm not one of those people. Well, yeah, I was I was like Disney is not like a relaxing vacation for us. So I that's not really a problem for me and but I can see like also if you have a lot of little kids like waking up at 7 a.m. and like trying to make selections when your kids are like bouncing off the walls yeah. cuz I don't know why small children tend to do that first thing in the morning. They, they do. Yeah. Um <laughs> I can imagine that just being ugh, hectic. <laughs> One thing I do want to mention too, um, I thought, so back in, I don't know, I think it was 2018, something like that, they did talk about the Genie system, the Genie app that they were introducing. Yeah. It was going to revolutionize the park planning system and all that type of stuff. And we were like, okay, yeah, sure, we'll see that in like five years. And that's kind of almost what it yeah. ended up being. But when they first introduced it, I thought to myself, okay, like this is going to be replacing FastPass eventually. Yeah. Um, and I think they might have even mentioned that, but I thought it was a great name and a great way to introduce it because, you know, the genie grants three wishes yes. and fast passes at, at the, the time. time you could make three reservations per day. And it's like, oh, that's really cool. Um, now we come to figure out that, you know, just the standard, you know, with, with this genie, genie plus you're selecting one Which ride at a time. I, I honestly like that more. It doesn't allow you to plan your day as much, but I think it allows there to be more availability. And yes, but it also forces you to go to the park early and stay at the park, which they want. Yeah. Oh, because yeah, because they don't want you scheduling your all of your fast passes in the morning. And or then, no, they don't want you scheduling your fast passes at night and then not showing up till then. Got it. Yeah, eat, yeah, yeah, eat yeah. off off site property, or whatever but stuff you like do, that. I, even off site guests do not need to be in the parks to make their reservations. Correct. I do want to clarify that. Yeah. Um. So in, in at Disney World, it includes um a special AR lens. It sounds like it's just special Snapchat lenses, basically. That's stupid. <laughs> but at Disneyland, it includes unlimited photo pass photo downloads. So that kind of explains the pricier price because um, to get a memory maker for like, uh, you know, it's, I don't know how, how many days memory maker is, but those things started like $200 or something. Yeah. Memory maker is crazy expensive. Which is like photo pass photographers for those who are completely going in blind to Disney trips. Photo pass photographers are located at a bunch of different yeah, photo op, yeah. op you know, um, locations and they take photos of you and then you scan your magic band and then you could purchase them later. It's got a watermark over it, stuff like that. And with that, uh, what were what, what, Memory maker? Memory maker, you have access to all of that yeah, or you, you can like buy a, them you individually. Have, you have an unlimited 
download amount for like your trip. And I don't know how many days it allows, but you have unlimited downloads. It's $200. That's not per person, thankfully, but that's $200. But if you want to download the photos individually, it's, uh, I think $17 to download them individually. Uh Um, and then it, it said it also includes audio experiences. I don't exactly know what this means yet. I think they're going to be virtual walking tours, but okay. not with a live person. I think it's going to be. I think that's cool. <laughs> I think that's really cool for um, people who have. The um, time? <laughs> well, people who have the time, people who are international visitors who don't want to have to pay yeah. for a you know vo- uh, walking tour with somebody who speaks their language. I think it's also great for um, a brand new experience for those who um, can otherwise uh, would have to it, you not that you it, it wouldn't provide a solo ex, a perfect solo yeah, experience yeah. for somebody who's blind, yeah. uh, but it also provides another you know option for experiencing the parks in a different way that is curated by Disney yeah. rather than having um, you know it's it's I don't know it's it's something that I haven't I've we've never done a like a walking tour with a person you know yeah. you see them all the time at the parks. Uh, where there's a bunch of people walking to the parks with yeah. earpieces and there's one person guiding it's, it. It's something we want to do, but we've just never done because, again, it's an additional price and we just haven't justified that. But um, I just hope they select somebody great for the voiceover. Yes. Oh, that would be so fun. So we'll, we'll you see. You get like a good voice. Yeah. Oh, okay. James Earl Jones is my <laughs> <laughs> Um And the one thing I do want to mention about Genie Plus is that not every attraction is included in Genie Plus. It does not include the biggest attractions, which you do see this at Universal with Express Pass, which now that I think about it, that's kind of BS. Honestly, if I'm paying $191 on top of my $150 ticket, I want to be front of the line on Velocicoaster. Yeah. <laughs> that is rude, honestly. <laughs> um, but so you're seeing something similar here, but I think Disney has more rides that are not included than Universal does. Yeah. Um, so, so far we've heard that the rides that are going to be used virtual queues, so Rise of the Resistance and Remy's Ratatouille, whatever, yeah, adventure. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm excited for it. I just can't, I don't know the name. Yeah. Um, so those are not going to be available on Genie Plus. You're going to have to pay a surcharge. Well, you can still try to get a boarding group, but... Boarding groups are already incredibly hard to get. For Rise of the Resistance. Yes, yes. It's very hard to get a boarding group. There are people who like still have not gotten a boarding group for Rise. Yeah. There's a million videos on YouTube and stuff where like how how to guarantee yourself a spot. I, and then there's – it's it's I hate this so much. But there's one video I watched. I'm not going to say who it was. I know who it was off the top of my head. But you'll watch a video of them – explaining how to get a boarding group and you know you got to make sure you're not on wi-fi and you got to be in this location then refresh this time all the stuff and it's a guy who's local to orlando and he says you know i have ridden rise of the resistance 17 times and i i've gotten it every single time at 7 a.m and this is how you do it and it's like excuse me sir there are so many people who come in from out of town who are not able to ride this and like and also if you're not like immersed in disney culture like you're not gonna know that this is an impossible thing you're not gonna know that you need to be on the app at 7 a.m because we've heard people be like oh i woke up at seven to get my boarding group it's like no these things will go in like 13 seconds not even it'll go in one second yeah so so (laughs) but no i just for me like i i want to make sure that you know do your research on this thing, but once this new genie stuff comes out, you're almost guaranteed to not get it because, without paying for it. Because it's already impossible to get, and now they're taking away a chunk. We don't know how much that chunk is going to be, but even if it's a fourth of those those boarding passes or those those boarding groups, it's probably going to be three fourths of the boarding groups that are. Gonna I don't be paid think it's going to be that bad. No, because it, it depends on the day. If there's if there's you know. 5,000 people who pay $15 to ride Rise of the Resistance, they're going to guarantee those people who paid over anybody it just, who's getting the boarding group. It just sucks because, I mean, they do they do limit how many people, like how many, it's, like it's pay subject. For it. Yeah, it's subject to availability. Um, but it just sucks because if you want to guarantee yourself on those rides, then you basically have to pay for them now. And while they haven't released the pricing of what that's going to be, I'm just assuming it's going to be similar to how it is in Paris, if not worse. 
And it's going to be like $20 per person. Yeah. So if, you know, let's, let's do the math on this whole system. If you want to be able to use this, you know, ver- new version of fast pass and you're a family of four, you're at Disney world, you're going to be paying $15 per person. 15 times four is 60. So then on top of that, if you want to ride rise of resistance, um, and Ratatouille Adventure. So let's say you're there for a four-day trip. I'm doing this math. If you want to pull up your phone to do the math out, it's okay. So let's say you're doing a four-day trip or, okay, five-day. A lot of people do five-day trips where you're at the, the parks for five days. So five times 60 for okay. a family That's of four. 300 $300 on top of your regular tickets on your hotels, everything like that. Now you want your family to ride Rise of the, Rise of the Resistance and guarantee a spot and ride the Ratatouille ride and guarantee a spot. Let's say it's somewhere between 15, 20. Let's assume 20 for each of those. So 20 times four times two plus 300 plus 300 that's an additional 460 dollars on your trip to guarantee you to have the old fast pass system virtually in your pocket um when it was free before now it's completely different because the lines are going to be operating differently because not everyone's going to be doing this but um that is the word that is kind of our wrap on the genie and genie plus system um we will say this is announced to be launching this fall yeah and they said this fall, I do not think it's going to be happening on September 21st when fall officially begins. I don't think, I don't think, I don't know. Do you think it's going to be happening for the 50th? Do you think that's what they're trying to do? It would be a disaster. Crowd, crowd control for 50th? <laughs> we, um, so like we mentioned before, we are not going to be the people no. to be using this. I know it would make great content for us to be able to be, let's try out this new system. And every vlogger, every YouTuber, TikTok, what, they're all going to try it. But we are not going to be people to try it first. Yeah. We are going to be the guinea pigs for the standby line. Like honestly, we we can go and we can t- we can we will time our waits in the standby lines. Yes, um, and also, uh, you know, I I think it is good to mention that this is a brand new app that they are not mm-hmm. going to be testing before it launches. Or if they test it, it's going to be you know. They'll be testing it, but they won't be testing it with the general public. Yeah, they're not going to be testing it with the 40,000 plus people yes. who are going to be trying to use it on opening day so or opening day of the system. So I, I will say that I am very much looking forward to seeing the you know shock wave from this new system, and I'm not going to be a part of it. I am not going to be one person like... Oh, can you imagine paying for it and then it crashing? Because that's what's going to happen the first day. Yeah. Oh, oh, um, I didn't think about that. Uh, and the the other the other part of it, which we mentioned, we were talking about this earlier because it's such a dense topic. Um, the the already problem with sense of entitlement of guests coming oof, to parks and oof. dealing with cast members and having cast members, you know, have to deal with guests who are very upset about their trip for whatever reason. You know, everybody's most of the time has a, a, a just cause to be upset with something that goes on about their with their vacation they paid so much money for. But now that they are able to pay this premium price of an extra $15 and then they're not getting exactly what they were promised or the app crashes or any whatever. Um, Cast with, member. Oh. With that extra pay and that extra excuse to be like, well, I did There's this. There's an extra like, sense of entitlement because it's like, well, I'm paying extra. Why, why do I have to wait? Yeah, you know, why don't I immediately get sent to the front of the line? And then, the, you know, with in the problems like with Express Pass at Universal, I know we shouldn't be comparing it. <laughs> Express Pass at Universal, they're going to be comparing it to that and be like, well, at Universal, I got Express Pass. And it's like, yeah, you paid $200 yeah. extra on top of your tickets for that. And you paid $15 for this. Yeah. So um, I... I our heart, our heart goes out to the cast members. And who, cast members have already been dealing with enough. Yes. As it is. Already because of the pandemic and people coming to the parks to that probably like, shouldn't I, be coming to the I parks. I get it. <laughs> You've been cooped up for a while. Why are you being mean to these cast members? It's not their fault. Yeah. Whatever you're mad about, I can almost promise you it's not their fault. Yeah. Um, but uh, the other, the other, the other thing with every, the fast passes going away and everything like that, we're not, we're not wrapping this podcast yet. I know we said we were wrapping the genie system, but there is one more topic to discuss, yes. which was not really uh, like a, a public facing issue when they announced this genie system. But when you do go to the website, it was something that was yes. addressed. It's so, something that they're changing at, as they're changing everything. Yes, and since fast passes did go away, there was a 
big increase in would you like to talk about yeah. this? <laughs> so there's always the struggle of being like, okay, in, in invisible disabilities are absolutely a thing. You never know what people are going through. But there did seem to be a suspicious increase in the number of people who are using disability access services when there is a significant decrease in the number of people that are in the park. Yeah, if you do not know what disability access service at Disney and most other theme parks, um, it is pretty much a virtual line system where if you um, cannot be waiting in line, whether it be outside because you have, um, you know, you can't, sun exposure issues yeah, yeah. or you can't be standing in one spot or you are in a, you know, a, a motorized vehicle and you can't get through the line or if you have sensory issues, yeah, so, it, it's it's meant to cater to you so that you don't have to be in that environment. Yes. Um, but from, see, it's weird. It's, it's a hard subject to talk about because we are not in that realm and we are not going to be... Um, hopefully not within the realm to, to have to need to use that anytime soon. Yeah. Um, Unless we have people like we have, we have friends and family who would need it. Yes. But we are us, ourselves do not need it. Yes. Um, so, but just this past week um, we were in line for um, jungle cruise, jungle cruise and the jungle cruise line is absolutely absurd. Um, it was a 75 minute wait when we wrote it. It was um, horrible. I, oh, um, and I know her thoughts on that reflected a lot of people going up to the disability service um, or access service person at the front of the Jungle Cruise. And we can say we saw two or three groups that went up there that did not get approved to this beforehand that were just given yeah. a return time regardless. So it was two or three groups that maybe they did have an issue, but – they did not get this approved by the, you know, we, before you go into the park, you do have to go um, You visit. have to meet with guest services and they have to basically talk to you about uh, how you, why you need accommodated. Yes. Which, uh, perfectly, that, that this, it's, a, it's a great system that they have as of right now, but um, it it's... just It just sucks because we know that there are people who, like, because there are people abusing the system, people who do have invisible disabilities are going to get judged harsher yes because people are going to be like oh well they're fine they're just abusing the system even though you know uh the, people have stuff like pots and stuff that where if you're standing like you can just faint just faint yes and you don't want that to happen in line so um it's just <sighs> yeah it's, it's it's a really it's, hard subject to talk about it's it's a really frustrating when somebody is not approved for this but they do get a boarding uh, like a return time for their group because of 12. They're, because they're in a um because one of them is in a electric wheelchair and they probably don't actually need it well we're not gonna say probably we're yeah. gonna say we're gonna say some one one person in the group is in a uh electric a scooter. scooter yes scooter, not a wheelchair yes. a scooter um but um the new the announcement that they did pair with this new genie system was changes to their disability access service, which um, involved a pre-arrival registration and planning via live video chat. I don't yes. know if this is going to be built into the new Genie Plus app or this is the part of the Genie thing or just you're going to get an email beforehand that says you got to do this. But basically, you're not going to be going to guest services when you're here. Which is huge because that always rubbed me the wrong way. It's like, okay, so if you're disabled, you can't get right out there and, and you know get your return times right away. You have to go stand in this line that takes yeah, yeah. forever because they don't have a separate line for disability access service either. You're just standing in the regular guest service line. Yeah. So we've been in, in line with people trying to register for... Um, disability access. Yeah. And I don't know, that just rubbed me the wrong way. So I'm very glad to see they have an advanced planning option now. Yes. And it, it does, pro the live video chat, I think is a great system. Um, uh, I, I think it'll be interesting because they've never had guest services do live video chat stuff before from what I've seen, because it's like, it's, I mean, I've been on the line with Disney yeah. for three and a half hours before to, to book something or, you know, move reservations around stuff like that. Um, but the, the live video chat thing is interesting that they're introducing this. I think that's probably going to be, um, to help out with somebody, um, to like explain their situation and stuff like that, because I also think it's, they're hoping that pe if, if they have to look them in the face, they're hoping people won't lie. <laughs> well, and it's, and it's like, Oh, well, uh, I have a broken leg. It's like, okay, can I see your broken leg? I, yeah. I, I it's, it's weird. It's weird. Well, I, I will don't... say when we were in line for the jungle cruise, there was somebody in front of us on crutches in the standby line. And I'm like, sir, sir, you can go to disability access yes. service, sir. <laughs> that looks so painful. <laughs> 
Um, but you were able to register via video chat uh, as early as 30 days prior to your park visit, which is great. Um, I know there's going to be a giant, giant handful of people that don't know this is the new system and they're going to yes. go and do, you know, the old system anyway. And they will have it in place. I could almost oh, guarantee. Oh, no, no, no. This is in addition to the old system. Correct. These are all just options to do instead of, so you can plan more ahead of time. Um, but um, during your chat with a cast member, you'll also be, uh, have the opportunity to select up to two experiences per day using the new, um, the Dis disability access um, advanced planning option. Um, do you want to touch upon that a little bit? Yeah. So um, you can, with this, you will be able to select two return times ahead of time. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's, I think it, I don't know exactly how it works if it that's if it's just included in lightning lane or if they have a separate thing for disability access service. But um, that's really good that because you, I don't, I don't know if you could really book fast passes before, um, if you were using disability access service. I mean, you could obviously, but like, there are some people who like also can't make it through the um, fast pass line, you know, because yeah. like the fast pass lines aren't always like um, wheelchair accessible. Um, so, but obviously the DAS um, entrance is always accessible. Um, one thing we do not have in the notes is this thing that was added to the... Um, oh, yes, yes. So this is something that uh, was a big yay for us and for a yes. lot of other people who have been going to the parks semi-often and witnessing um, things that, you know, might be a little, you know, not cool for doing for disability access and abusing that system. This was something they did include with the new the revamped yes. system. So they said... What happens if any of the statements made by a guest in the process of registering for DAS are found to not be true? Disney said, if Disney determines that any of the statements a guest made in the process of obtaining DAS are not true, the guest will be permanently barred from entering Walt Disney World Resort and the Disneyland Resort, and any previously purchased annual passes, Magic Key passes, tickets, and other park products and services will be forfeited and not refunded. So, I don't know if they had any rule in place before, but... The hope is that this will deter people from lying because while we don't have any sort of evidence of how many people were, I mean, obviously we don't have any evidence how many people were abusing DAS. We know that DAS was being abused. Yes. It's as simple as that. And we Disney know is fully being, aware that it was being yes, abused as well. But they, there is no way to accuse people of being like, do you actually have a disability? Because without like discrediting people who, like we said, don't have obvious disabilities. Yeah. It's not going to be something where you have a doctor's note, stuff like that. Yeah. But it's, it's also going to be something where this new system, and I'm sure they will have it, um, discussed during these video chats. And when people are there live, that's something like once they get there the day of, they're going to bring it up and say, um, just so you know, before we start this, uh, if anything is found to be false, they, they, they will like, say that. Basically, it's going to be like a, if you're like, oh, you know, I have a broken foot and and you have a boot on and then you take the boot off and go go walking around the rest of your day. They're going to be like, hey, uh, you lied. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it, it, yeah, it's the whole system. You could see how people can uh, misuse this system and uh, say that they can't wait in long lines. And then also while they're waiting for the virtual re return time, be waiting in a long line somewhere else and yeah. stuff like that. So um, I, I, I talked about it the other day. I was like, maybe they have a wristband that they can have that yeah. they are, are kind of, they're able to then go use this system, but then also can be recognized to not having being allowed to wait in a long line but then they're seen waiting in a long line it's it's weird but like i think the the system that they have set up now when they announced this and the conversation we had with us the other day when we were doing jungle cruise was before this whole thing was announced yes so um yeah that's the well new there was one other thing that they did add for das is that you will now be able to select a return time in the app which I think is very good. You do not, you no longer have to go to the attraction to get a return time. Okay. You can just select the, uh, the, in the app, which I think is very good because like, um, my friend's brother, he can't be out in the heat for very long. So, you know, even just like having to travel to like, and wait to go get to a kiosk and, or a, a cast member, get a return time and then go back into the air conditioning. Um, I think this makes it a lot more accessible for people, um, who, uh, you know, genuinely cannot be out in the heat or, or can't be. Um, and I mean, it's just like, that's kind of a pain in the butt to have to go like 
all the way there, especially if you have like a comfy spot in like a restaurant and you just, and you're not trying to get in other lines while you're waiting. If you're just trying to, you know, hang out while you're waiting, yeah. which is, I think the idea of, yeah. Yeah. Overall, this whole new system that they have, including the disability access, the genie, everything like that, I believe in the long run, when they have this implemented for years, it will be a positive experience. Yes. Yes. Um, compared to the previous experience. I will say a quick story uh, from our first trip together to Disney. Uh, we were returning with a fast pass at uh, Seven Dwarves Mine Train. And oh. there was a family in front of us who was scanning in their magic. They scanned in their magic band. It didn't turn green, but they just kept walking on. And they're like, wait, hold on. And then the cast member checked and they had a fast pass at like... They had a fast pass for It's a Small World. And it was like at, a few hours a later. Time. Yeah. And they're like, well, oh, okay, I, sorry, I didn't... They, they played Clueless and this... You this, could kind of tell that they knew exactly what they were doing, but they, I don't know, they like thought it would just work for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. The, the whole the whole fast... It was pass. bad acting for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but uh, I think this new system at the beginning will allow people to kind of do stuff like but it, once it's once it's in place for a while and people are used to it and it's 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 Disney's going to have to their media team is going to have to put together a lot of videos to ex yeah. explain this and, and it's also I mean it is confusing like you have Genie then you have Genie Plus but then you also have different you have individual lightning lane attractions and there's different like requirements and stuff and everything opens at 7 like everything opens at 7 so yeah. you you have to try to book everything at once and so you have to try to book your, I guess, book your boarding groups first and then try to book your, I don't know. It's going to be confusing. But overall, my hope is that the standby lines are, my, my hope is that you don't need to use Genie Plus. My yeah. hope is that it's going to be totally fine without Genie Plus and that Genie Plus will just be if, you know, you want to get through stuff quicker. Yeah. My hope is that you will still be able to do everything. Like, I mean, obviously you can't do all of well, uh, all of Magic Kingdom in one day and stuff like that. Um, but my hope is that it will be fine. It'll be a better system than Fast Pass is because, like, the comparison I was thinking of is um, if you had if you if you took it in the era of Fast Passes, right? Let's let's think about the Fast Pass era, and you for for whatever reason were not allowed to get any Fast Passes. Yeah, that would be miserable, right? Correct, because everybody else yes. has it, yes. But my hope is that less people are going to be using Genie Plus and that overall they have solved some of the issues that, uh, you know, their their industrial engineering people figured out crowd control and stuff. Yeah. And that the standby lines will not be that bad. Yeah. The problem that I'm just thinking of is ratio is going to be worse than it was before because people are paying for it now. And um, there, if there is less people using Genie Plus, then the ratio is going to be different, but... Regardless, this know. is the new system. Thank you for tuning in today on our podcast. <laughs> I'm confused. Honestly, I flip-flopped like six times on this podcast. I don't know where I stand on this anymore. Um, if Again, we mentioned it at the very beginning. If you do want to let us know where you stand on this, what your thoughts on the new system are, if you're hopeful, if you're optimistic, let us know in the comments. If you absolutely hate it and you want old fast passes back. You're leave. wrong. Okay. <laughs> I, I also think fat old fast passes should not come back you probably there already know should, that there should be a system i don't i don't know i don't know um but thank you for tuning in today let us know in the comments again leave podcast reviews follow us on all of our socials um if you have any requests for future podcast topics leave those in the comments below as well um i we have been for the love of theme parks thank you for listening today and we will see you guys <laughs> real soon. okay hold on before i before i stop um is there anything else you want to say? No, I just don't know. I keep flip-flopping. I'm like, this sounds perfect. And then I'm like, oh, this is going to suck. I don't know. I, I've convinced myself both directions a bunch of times. Yeah. So let us know. I Just don't be so heated about this. These are it's theme parks. It's not the end of the world. It'll be fine, honestly. Like, we're called for the love of theme parks, not for the, um, you know. Obsession, obsession of, theme of theme parks. Obsession of theme parks and the, you know. Um, I don't know. Like, it'll it'll be okay. You're still going to have cast members making your trip to Disney World absolutely magical, even if you don't have Genie. Like, cast members are are amazing. Please don't be mean to them. They are there to, uh, you know, 
make your experience as magical yes. as possible and they are not going to be there to ruin your trip when you paid extra and they're not out to get you and yeah. like those people are not if you're going to be mad at people you know be you know, mad at that chapek be mad at bob chapek <laughs> write at, him a letter <laughs> write him a letter um at him on twitter whatever do it's that. absolutely not the cast members please if i see any of you out here harassing cast members i'm gonna be really mad i will name and shame on social media okay <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Thank you again for tuning in. Sorry for the fake out ending before, but we will see you guys next time. A warm welcome back to those of you who made it. And a friendly word of warning. Something you won't find in any guidebook. In order to keep up with new episodes of For the Love of Theme Parks podcast, Please subscribe. You can help support us by following us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at For the Love of Theme Parks. We'll see you soon. <laughs>